the first thing I like to do is go around and cut all the joints and remove the legs and get them out of my way. And you don't need a bone saw. You don't need all that mess. I like to do that. Down here there's actually two knuckles, two joints, one here and one here. Do not take the top one in case you like to hang your deer by its back legs. You won't be able to do that. There's the legs removed. Now the I've already this deer has already been gutted, so there's a big line cut straight up and down. That's what we need. This next step that I'm going to show you is where everyone goes does it wrong. All right, most people cut right here on a deer. That's so wrong in so many ways. Um, the way you're supposed you should be cutting them is on the top right here. I just stick my knife in and I follow the top of this arm and once I get to the main body I turn in and go to the chest and that's where you're supposed to be cutting them. That, that one cut right there is what determines the shape of your hide and this is going to make a square hide. So this is where you put this little guy away, you don't need it. Luckily this is a, a doe and it won't be so tough. But I like to just start pulling and find myself a little section here. And once you get the meat, if you start the hide correctly, there won't be hardly any meat on the hide. So right here you can see I've got a good start. get my fingers in there. This is where most people start cutting. That's where they have a problem. So right there I've got a good start. I can continue pulling this hide off. And I'm using my knuckles. I'm actually rotating my hand in there. And it helps me use my leverage and get this deer hide off. I just had a hide brought to me the other day. And I didn't know what it looked like but they said that they didn't they couldn't skin it good because they didn't have a good knife. And that already told me what my hide was going to look like. And sure enough it looked pretty crummy. So if it's a really tough deer you can use the knife to start an area so you can get your hands into it. Like right here, this is a piece that's still connected and if I just kept pulling, I would pull all that meat off. So I'm going to come up above it and fix that problem. And if you have trouble, like right here, there's, don't, you don't need to get your knife out for that. You can just take your hands and pull it. And it will free that area up. The places I see knife marks and scores on the, the hide mostly is this belly, where they're trying to whack away at it. But as you can see, it's coming off really easy. These necks can get a little tough. I see a lot of knife marks on the neck. But if you can just get it started, it'll come off just fine. Just like that right there. So I've got this just about done on one side. And I like to walk them all the way down 
This is another area that's hard. It makes you want to use a knife. You can see it's, it's not really wanting to pull. You just got to get up in behind it. You can use your hand like a knife. Like You don't need a, a knife for any of this. Alright, so we got one side done. Let's see if we can do this other side. See if I can get this neck going. We'll be in business. Looks like I've still got a little bit more cutting to do. There we go. So, our hide's starting to pull off. I still need to free up a little bit more over here and you can see if you're just beginning and you don't really have the understanding of this you can just pull it as long as you pull it you can leave all the meat on it you want it's not that hard for me to take the meat off during tanning if you're like to use your knife like a crazy axe murderer I suggest you leave more meat on the hide that means you're not going to cut the hide. And this is, people use their knife like this. And they don't know the difference between skin and meat. And then they cut the hide. So, it's really super easy. And there's nothing on the hide. I'm going to free up a little bit more. Something I wanted to talk about was where to cut on the back legs. And that is between the brown hair and the white hair. towards the end. I don't know if many of you have ever seen this group of muscles left on the deer. Most of the time it comes off with the hide. Mm. If you 
want to keep the tail on your hide. And this also works for anything like fox, uh, raccoon, coyote, if you want to skin other animals too. I wrap my hand around the base of the tail. If I just kept pulling, I would rip this off. It wouldn't even come out all the way. I like to grab a hold of it and put my thumb on it. And it comes right off. In one piece. So, that's our deer skin. I want to take a look at this hide to show you the shape that I was talking about. Hopefully you can definitely see the shape of this skin. If you were to cut it where normal most people cut it, which is under the arms, instead of having this square shaped hide, you would have a hide that's shaped like this. On both sides you would have a really narrow spot right here. And like I like to make clothes out of my skin, so if I was trying to make a jacket out of this and this hide was this hide looked like this, which is what they actually look like if you skin them the way most people do. I couldn't really make a shirt out of that. It might be too narrow. So, that's proper deer hide skinning.